Hello everybody, welcome to episode 10 of the Spotter's Guide. Now things are going to look a little bit different and inventory is definitely empty as this is a brand new world. This is uh, created with the Beta 2 Preview 16. Uh, things have pretty much stabilized, uh, a lot of us have been going around testing it, finding bugs and stuff like that. And there's a significant amount of changes, especially to the early game as it currently rests. And uh, I've burnt my wrist pretty badly, so hopefully that won't affect my mouse movement and get me killed. But if I do start doing something funny, I'm just going to blame it on that. And so, initial first day rules, same as always. We're looking for some sticks. And we're going to start with this tree here. And I always forget if this is the white cedar or the white elm. I want to say it is the white elm, but I'm probably wrong. White cedar, that's what I thought. Alrighty. So I'm just gonna gather some sticks for use in tools and weaponry. And one of the first things, first things that I want to show is that there is no sword to save your life now. <laughs> So uh, we're going to go around, we got some sticks here, we're going to gather some flint up, I'll save those seeds for later if, as long as I can still have some room. Uh, I don't see, ah, there's a piece, a couple of pieces. So clearly in the uh, taiga biome, some water off in that direction. Oh, I'm also not sure if I had uh, the minimap on last time I recorded, I don't believe I did. Uh, so I've added in the minimap to help me keep track of things as I find them in the world. Uh, I just got tired of going through sheets and sheets of a graph paper, which is where I take most of my notes on so I can also do little doodles real quick. Um, just to write down coordinates of deposits and there was always more and more and more and... Hello, sheepy. So anywho, um, the minimap allows me to just edit the uh, waypoints in the actual game so it'll keep track of them associated with the map that I'm currently on. So I'm just going to start making our tools. We need four of these uh, to create a new crafting table and I really want to kill that sheep. Not because I don't like sheep but because I need a bed and unfortunately that's the only way to get one. So we shall just stick him to death. Got a keep an eye on the sun. It always seems to rise pretty fast on the first day. Let's see if we can't get gravity to help us out here. There we go. And I saw, yeah, one more. Ah, wolf. The wolf could help us out. Or not. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we have the white cedar, there's some birch, let me see, this is an awfully, no that is hickory, it's fairly light bark, but that's a very dark wood in there, and that's definitely the color of hickory, so let's snag a couple of these as well, get a couple more sticks, one of the most things I spend most of my time doing. So you think I'd be better at it by now. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, so more of the changes that have happened since uh, the last video. The last video was using beta... Actually, I started using the beta 2 previews uh, to do the SMP. And I also did a couple of, uh, like episode 9 I believe, was actually using uh, probably like beta 6 or 7, or preview 6 or 7, sorry. And the reason that I've been holding off to do this episode for such a long time is that the world generation has changed. I don't know if anybody's picked up on it yet, but the Y coordinate is the height value, and it's on the, uh, the bottom part of the map here and I am sitting at roughly 148 right now. So with the changes that have happened is this is actually TFCraft is using both chunk layers, both the lower and the upper chunk to generate the worlds now. 
Uh, it does make the game require a bit more RAM. Uh, you'll see up in the corner here, it kind of dims out, but you should still be able to see this. I usually sit around, I want to say like 200 to 300. I'm now sitting around 300 to 400. Uh, it's not that huge. Uh, I have noticed on certain systems, uh, like I have a laptop uh, that doesn't have that much RAM, that it can often be an issue. So you do want to make sure that uh, you're aware of the, the memory issues if you're messing around with how much memory you're giving Minecraft. But the, the world generation is just so much fun. And look at the, the nice little Gabbro rock up here. Oh, and there's... I like the plains. I mean, there's chickens, there's cows. This is a pretty nice area. I did, can't believe that this is just a random map that I got into. Uh, I will be posting the seed. Uh, right there it is. I will also be putting it into the description and updating the links and everything. I'm actually told that the link I have to uh, like smart moving and such is probably out of date. So that stuff will be forthcoming. Uh, now that I got enough flint, I'm going to make one more tool and let's get our crafting bench going because I want to show what we do now for defense and these are actually really really neat is instead of a sword stone we actually have javelins uh, javelins are made in a very basic pattern we're still using flint for the uh, for the uh, sharp pointy business end of things uh, and then it's in a, a row of sticks, just like you would do an actual tool, and then one extra gets you a javelin. And the neat thing about the javelin is it's both a uh, melee and a ranged weapon. So I'm going to make a couple of them, because because uh, what you'll see <laughs> is you can throw them if you accidentally hit the right button. Uh, you can pick them up again. And one of the things to notice is that it actually moved the javelin that I used to have in this slot here is I didn't actually change which one was active is when I threw the first one the second one automatically went into the slot so uh, they'll refill in that manner I do believe it has to be left to right though so you want to use them on the right and then have one sitting to the left of it to get it to use it now one of the things I wanted to point out is for a melee weapon, I mean, that was one poke, two, three, four, five. So five hits, um, you'll notice that was about the same as I was doing to the sheep with the stick. Uh, cows do take a couple more hits, but the, uh, the spear seems to balance that out a little bit. As a thrown weapon though, they can do significant damage. Uh, that was a completely uh, uninjured cow, so I just wanted that to be pointed out We'll do it one more time, just to make sure that it didn't fall off. I want to say I had to poke it once before, but maybe a fully drawn back javelin will do it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, another thing to notice... Oh no, I got it back. Uh, javelins can actually break, so I wanted to show that, but so far I haven't had much luck. I want to leave at least two cows because this looks like a pretty nice place to settle. I got a forest right on the other side of there for trees. Uh, nice wide open plains. I do like the topography of the mountains. Uh, Gabbro is a pretty interesting rock. I want to say that this is where you can get um, uh, nickel from. And nickel is one of the unique metals that's used in alloys for some of the higher end steels. So that'll come into play a little bit later on. I just have to hope that I'm not uh, too far away from a tin or something like that to create the bronzes and, I, and such that I need. But what I am going to do now is just go over and start collecting ooh, no sign of the sun. I'm gonna start collecting very quickly some of this gabbro. Um, it has been pointed out that my first day strategy of not having any sort of a house or a hidey hole uh, isn't exactly the normal. Um, it never used to be mine as well. I honestly used to dig into a hole and usually uh, just dig straight down and explore a cave or something like that for the first night. Um, you know, after collecting a couple of trees to get what, uh, what you need and such. Um, but with the changing for the spawning logic to where it's not you go to sleep, it forces a creature to spawn and if it wakes you up, you're woken up sort of deal to uh, as long as you're safe you can sleep and then it will be daylight this changes things a little bit because it uh, it allows me to do 
how I've been doing it, where, the, where there is really no protection around you, just a bed and you time it right to sleep before any uh, creatures come over and get you. Ah, so we took the time to make that wool and now I really don't want to use up my flint and I also don't want to use up this on a axe so we'll go back once more uh, all the same mods as before so everything is still the same uh, for this particular recording I do not have us uh, uh, simply horses enabled uh, I will be putting that in uh, for the next recording and I'm still trying to do a installation recording I just I don't have any software that can actually record my desktop uh, it's strictly just things that can record the uh, the applications that I'm running and the desktop does not count as one of those so moon is up I should not be looking around got my gabbro and we'll make one more pick that way if the one that I have breaks without me noticing I always have the spare for, uh, excuse me, for backup. And one, two, three, one, two, three. I can hear the chicken, but it's making me nervous that it's something else. So, for the first night, we are just going to lay down and swap over to the javelin just in case something comes over. I have had that happen a couple of times. Alrighty. So that was uh, good enough for that night, so I can just continue on. I'm going to just put my axe down here. Uh, I want to make a shovel real quick. And once again, I apologize for the jerky sharp movements. My uh, wrist is not mobile as much as it used to be. So it gets mostly finger action and they're not as accurate as moving in the rest of your arm and such. Uh, so, oh, yeah, Gabbro. Just making sure I had that right. I like Gabbro uh, because it makes that nice little pattern from a distance. When you get closer it kind of fades away and you can see it, but uh, the little squiggle is a very easy way to tell from a distance that you're looking at a Gabbro mountain. Uh, Gabbro, let me make my shovel. Running low on sticks already, wow. Uh, some of the things you might notice is the updated textures for the uh, the stone picks and such. If you are upgrading, please make sure that you consider uh, upgrading the texture pack as well, because I don't even believe these sorts of things existed, like the javelins and such. So that is one of the things you're going to need. And I'm going to head back into the forest real quick, uh, using Smart Moving's little zippy ow, little uh, zippy mm -hmm. movement, because I really need more than just a couple more sticks here, and we'll also collect some flint. Uh, it's become even more important now that it's part of the javelins because you've seen uh, when you throw them how powerful they are. Uh, but they also can break. I've been lucky so far where they haven't. Uh, I'm usually not this lucky. They usually break uh, after two or three throws on me, which so I use them mostly as melee weapons. Uh, but it is nice to have them around when you simply don't want to get close to that creeper, you know, or uh, that sort of an environment where moving from your current location could jeopardize either something that you built uh, just or where you're going some outcropping it's just better a better option to take care of it from a distance so that's why I keep the two javelins on me they should usually be able to take care of just about everything so let's get a little bit more wood here stick count is up to 14 Continue our work, and I'm going to take a look around for a little bit. That's uh, mostly what I'm going to be doing for the first couple of days. Um, the other videos, uh, you know, I always try to cover a topic because people were trying to get into the game. I, I think there's enough information in the previous videos now that I don't need to try to cover a specific topic in them. So I'm actually going to change the format of these videos a bit and just do move it more to a let's play. But when I do cover something specific. I'm going to restructure the spotter's guide on the wiki to actually uh, just contain the topics so it's easier to find. So you don't have to sort through the different days 
to try and figure out um, where the specific topic is that you're looking for. So hopefully that'll make things a little bit easier. I can continue to record and then just add in the new bits and pieces or the clarifications as they come along. Like uh, some of the things that are in this new update are armor. Is the the metal armor is also in here. We will not be getting that to that in this episode as I'm barely working with the uh, flint and steel as it stands right now. I'm going to try to collect one more sapling here. I only see three types of trees here. There's an awful lot of hickory, so I'm wondering if uh, I just got a double hickory, maybe. And I am in the water. Let's get out of the water. I wonder if eventually that'll be a bad thing, jumping into the water into an, in an arctic biome. So we shall see. Just to cover the uh, the Let's Plays, or not the Let's Plays, the SMP server. Uh, I do run an SMP server. It is mostly used by a group of us that help uh, test out the bugs and such like that as fast as possible. Uh, it is currently invite only, and generally we have to know you before we invite. Uh, I do leave it open to other people uh, to have yes or no action or input on people that get into it because it, it really does take a specific mindset to be able to restart constantly to retest things you've already tested and such like that so um, if you are interested I would suggest finding the IRC channel I sit in it fairly regularly uh, just you know chat with us uh, the quite a few or actually all the people who are on the server are actually sitting there as well so it's easy for us to get to know you after a couple of days and then you can you know see if you want to join on that sort of deal um, looks like we're changing biomes again but it looks like the tree selection is just about the same but we got a darker wood looks like a spruce or a pine but would I be lucky enough nope not a cherry that's a very light wood that's probably a spruce nice dark uh, leaves here although something tells me it's the pine that has the dark leaves now that I'm thinking about it again Geez, somebody should make a spotter's guide so they can figure out what these are all the time. Let me see. Pine. Yeah. Dark leaves, light wood, pine tree. Unlike vanilla Minecraft, which is dark wood, dark trees, dark bark, <laughs> he's a pine tree. Pine is also a very soft wood, so when I chop this down, it should actually chop down pretty quickly. But uh, wherever I end up settling, ooh, looked a little orangey. Wherever I end up settling, I like having a uh, a forest selection, so I don't have to go over and find trees all the time. Is I'll just build a nice little collection of the different trees that I'm looking for. Uh, you know, maybe like a little three by three or a four by four or the like. Uh, so birch, hickory, pine. Getting a couple more white cedars here. Yeah. So white cedar is the brightest wood in the game, or lightest. I, should, I guess I should say not necessarily brightest. If you have seen the uh, the sycamore, <laughs> that is what I consider the brightest. It's a nice bright orange wood. Uh, this is actually just a straight up white wood. And there we now have a little bit over a stack of sticks. So this forest appears to have many similar trees. We have the hickories again, and we have the white cedars. I mean, maybe I'm still a little close to the edge, although it still looks like the same here. Nice chickens and cows. Um, if you don't want to use the javelin, the next best weapon or er, item to use for slaughter is going to be the axe. Uh, you'll notice that it is taking my durability down pretty quickly, um, but I hear the music playing, and that means my time isn't uh, going to be that much longer, and what I want to do is get a nice source of food so I can start cooking that up. There we go. So moving through the leaves. It's amazing how much of a hard time I have playing regular Minecraft now <laughs> and uh, jumping through the leaves and smacking my face on them. So it's uh, 
fairly easy to get used to this style of gameplay and just expect this to be the way it is. Uh, but it's not the case. So... That gives me a nice stack of stakes. A nice piece of leather. Might be able to make myself some armor there. That would certainly help. And... I don't have any string yet. But I'm always on the lookout for... Uh, arrow components. So, once again, we have the chickens that were over in the valley, so I'm not really worried about killing these off. There we go, got a couple of arrows, some chicken to cook up as well. So this will really uh, help us out, is uh, a nice stack of food can probably last us a good long while. And of note, here is our first clay deposit that we've discovered. So this is where you're going to see me pop up a little, uh, a little mini-map marker. So, X key, no, no, C key. There we go. Uh, I'm used to clay being orange, so I actually color the clay. Actually, I'm used to it also being gray, so maybe I'll just do the gray. I'll do like a 130. And we will just call this clay. And typing is slow when your hand is wrapped in an ice towel. <laughs> There we go. So, uh, this is what I was mentioning, is this is easier for me to write this down uh, in the game here, as opposed to writing down the coordinates. Uh, I think it equates to about the same thing. I could just look to my left, see the coordinates, you know, pop up the F3 key and run there. This saves me a couple of steps. It makes sure, makes sure that my coordinates are located to where... Uh, uh, to the world that I'm currently in, so if I ever do redo a world, I'm not all tied to it. So there we got our pine again. This looks like the new tree. This is the spruce. Still a very light, uh, ew. still a very light, uh, wood on the inside, a fairly dark tree on the outside, but it has the lighter leaves on the outside as well. sun is setting and I would very much like to find myself a nice little hidey hole for the evening and that face over there looks perfect so we're just gonna swim over uh, the first night or in this case the second night is a good time to go in and now we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, even. So let's get rid of that one. One, two, three. Symmetry in even a hidey hole. Uh, you'll notice that I mine from the top down. This is to prevent cave-ins. Uh, this is a mechanic that will be changing. Every time uh, Biox sees us do this, he kind of grits his teeth a little bit and goes, you know, I'm going to fix that one of these days. <laughs> right now, he's working on the uh, the agriculture stuff first, uh, however. So we're good for now. But that is why you go from the top down, is the way the, um, the cave-ins happen is they look for when you're mining, they will go and check around and see if the block that was above the one you mined is capable of falling in. And there's so many factors that go into this that I am not going to run through all of them. Um, but what it basically does by mining from the top down is you have a chance to cause a cave-in with that. That right there could cause a cave-in, but because I'm in such a small little hill here, this isn't that deep. Um, ooh. All right, sounds like a pig. I am just going to be safe, however, and say, no. There we go. Um, so as I was saying, um, so it checks, it's, it could cause a cave-in, even this is not entirely safe, but uh, for the first block the chances of it happening are fairly low, so in general you're going to be okay. But as I'm mining these other rows, since nothing's resting on top of them, uh, they won't cause a cave-in, so they're safe to mine down to the floor, floor that I'm working at. Uh, I'm just going to dig a little bit more here. Uh, I can collect this stone, which by the way is siltstone. 
Uh, it's hard to see in this light, yeah, at least for me. But still, stone is usually a little uh, pinkish color. I mean, I can definitely see from the white to the pink over there. But I'm uh, not sure it would have been my first guess as to what this was. So, here we go. This will give us enough stone to have some tools for quite some time. It's probably going to consume this pick here. And what I want to do now, however, oops, top down. Ah, uh, yeah, even mining in the bottom there, while it has a block on top of it, does give it a potential to cause a cave-in. So it is something that you just, you need to be consciously aware of. And I can hear the pig and the chicken walking around outside, but it's making me really paranoid. I'm expecting to turn around and see a creeper or something outside the door. So just finishing off this little bit of a pattern. You'll find that I do patterns in just about everything I do. So I got a three, three, three little corners there. Gonna set up a little bed here. Where should we put down the workbench? I'm thinking back on the side. Have plenty of hickory. There's a chest. And it's not facing the way I want it to, so we'll just use the little update block. <coughs> and what I'm going to do on this side is set up a set of fire pits. So I got my little fire starter ready. I'm going to just move that over to make things a little simpler. We need some sticks, some sticks, and some sticks. So we right click, we get a fire. Right click a whole bunch more, we get another fire, and another fire. Uh, so some uh, durability down in the fire starter here. So uh, um, I skipped over that recipe pretty quickly. Uh, fire starter is just two sticks on the crafting table in any diagonal pattern. That'll get you the fire starter stick. I only need one of those for now, so that'll be good enough. And what I'm going to do is right click into the uh, fire interface here. And I'm going to add a log into the uh, queue for the fuel for the fire. And you'll see as soon as I click it, actually, you won't see it at all. I clicked it, I used it up, and what it actually did was it put it in here and then immediately consumed it. So you can see the temperature there rising up. I'm going to do the same here to get that temperature up, have the one block in the waiting, and then that there with that. So I put in the hickory first because I wanted that to burn. It burns at a significantly higher temperature. And now, I'm just going to shift click my beef, put it in, and it will automatically put it into the warming slot here. And we're just going to wait for it to heat up. It'll drop down to here after it gets very hot for a little bit. There we go, and should be just about cooked. There we go. Add in another steak. And I do the multiple fire pits for efficiency only, really. Uh, it's a good way to cook the, uh, the steak as fast as I want to. It's not going to stay nighttime forever. Although with this viewing angle, I might not be able to tell if it ever isn't nighttime. And it consumed my birch. Uh, we will just let it keep going. I also want to make some torches. That's why I got so many stacks of wood here. As soon as I get this cooked up. Uh, I like to cook everything at once. That way I don't have half a stack of raw beef and half a stack of cooked uh, steaks at the same time. There we go. And I saw the temperature dropping again. So it's consumed the wood. It's starting to slowly burn out. Let's see what a white cedar does. Or, ah, in this case, it's just the birch burns lower, so the temperature's finally dropping in the fireplace. Uh, still plenty hot to cook stuff, however, so I'm not overly concerned about that. In fact, there we go. Steak, steak. Or steak, cow, steak, cow, steak, cow. Let's do a little organizing. Birch. 
hickory, pine, white cedar, spruce. So there's all of our trees. Might actually even just put them in here. Uh, we're not going to need the leather for a little bit. So that gets our steak. Let's cook up some of the chicken. Not going to need the feathers immediately because I don't have anywhere to put this. Uh, I don't have anywhere to shoot the arrows from. So siltstone, siltstone. Put the extras. A couple of gabbro. Chicken. Chicken. Uh, oops. Steak. Cooked chicken. Yay. And for this lucky one, I'm going to start doing the torches, which catch fire fairly quickly, and then turn a single stick into two torches. Just going to move that up there for faster clicking. <coughs> and just going to use up what's left of these fires for making the torches. Uh, this is a action that I'm not actually sure if it is faster or not but it keeps me busy and utilizes at least some of the energy left in all the fires especially that middle one ah, I'm doing pretty good, I actually saw that one turn so I can't be doing too bad for optimal utilization just means the one on the ends are uh, burning a little bit slower since it does take a couple until I get back to that one. Alrighty, going to actually stop with the more there. That leaves me with a 20 sticks. You can see my fires are getting fairly low, but I now have a nice stack of torches and a nice collection of steaks to eat uh, looks like the sun is coming up and before I do that I'm going to use the axe take three birch a couple of white cedar and a hickory and we're going to make one of the most interesting laid out doors there are However, it will turn into just a normal door for now. <laughs> so, looks like we have a friend over there. Going to put up some torches. And in here as well for when the sun goes down. And so, I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I'm going to try and record more regularly as I do enjoy playing this game still. Uh, Diablo is, I will admit, taking up a bit of my time as I do uh, play an hour or so of that a day. I'm actually thinking about doing a video on that with some people, uh, like a hardcore mode video, and just seeing how long we can survive and such. But that'll be uh, something coming down the road as I still need to figure out how those characters are doing. So when we come back to this one, uh, I might spend some offline time just scouting the area a little bit to see if we do have any uh, granite deposits nearby or if I maybe can dig down, find granite underneath us, because we, we will want some kind of uh, tin or we'll look for uh, the other materials like zinc or um, tin, zinc, and why can't I remember the third one right now? Bismuth. Ah, bismuth, yeah. Uh, I actually don't like using bismuth because its melting temperature and its workable temperature are so close. It actually makes it one of the harder metals to work with. Um, but so we'll look for zinc, we'll look for tin. Hopefully we'll find some zinc. I really don't like the red steel. I prefer the blue steels, and zinc is only used in red. So it's a nice low-tier metal that I can use without any guilt about uh, potentially removing access to the, uh, the higher metals. So... Um, uh, hope to hear from you guys. Uh, let me know if there's anything you want me to cover. I have been reading the comments and there are a couple of things on my list that I'll go over again or uh, for the first time and such. So you can look forward to that. Uh, have a good one.